should be no coincidence 11 of the past 12 Heisman Trophy winners were quarterbacks. No position in the game gets more praise and pressure than the guy under center. To discuss the next generation of QBs, the soon-to-be household names who will be second-guessed the moment they walk on the field, we welcome our managing editor Pete Futek and our Sooners insider Chris Plank. Chris, let's start with you and the team that you cover. Gone is the Landry Jones era, the belldozer. Blake Bell must now prove he can throw as well as run. Is he up to the task? Well, Blake's got to win the job first. I, I don't necessarily know if it's a slam dunk that he's going to be the guy. I think the one thing we were able to take from spring football is the quarterback run game is going to be a more intricate, obvious, and consistent part of the Sooner offense. Now, I'm of the belief that Bell eventually will win the job, but he's getting a heck of a push from Kendall Thompson and also Trevor Knight. Experience will probably help Blake Bell win the job, but I'm telling you, it's going to be a battle all the way through fall camp before Oklahoma opens its season against Louisiana Monroe. And I think this competition will make them all better. I'm really excited to see Blake Bell try to up his game because these youngsters, these freshmen have not slowed down or let off a bit. It's a true challenge, a true quarterback battle. Chris, another program you're very familiar with, the Pokes at Oklahoma State. Mike Gundy has three quarterbacks in the roster who threw for over 1,000 yards last year. Which one will he pick? How about that stat? What, was there only five or six returning Big 12 quarterbacks this year that had taken a snap in Big 12 play, and three of them played for Oklahoma State? That's, that's pretty incredible. I really like J.W. Walsh. And if he doesn't get hurt last year, boy, there's a common theme for Oklahoma State quarterbacks. He might have been the guy that played the entire season. Clint Shelf might not have ever stepped on the field. I really like J.W. Walsh. Yeah, we'll see, though. But the problem is with Walsh, you got a, a level about here. There's a reason why Wes Lunt was named the starter to start the season. You know, he might need a little time and seasoning, but the upside is here. He could be the one who takes Oklahoma State to another level. Walsh and Shelf are ballers. They can certainly play, but I think when all is said and done, they're going to end up going with Lunt. All right, Pete, let's throw out a couple more quarterback situations your way. At USC, they're also additioning three quarterbacks out there. Yep. So who leads the offense on the field August the 29th? Throw them in a bag, take one out, and you probably got the right one. I mean, uh, the problem right now is everyone's assuming it's going to be Max Wittick because he's the guy who started at the end of last year. Obviously, things didn't work out all that well, uh, but he's got the time logged in, and that seems to give him the leg up over everyone else, but he hasn't really lit it up this offseason. He had a slight knee injury this spring. Open up the door a little bit for some of the other options. Uh, Cody Kessler, Max Brown, they're both still in that hunt. Uh, Kessler's very efficient, very effective. Brown still needs a little bit of work. I still think it's going to be Wedick, but it's going to be one of the big, big things this offseason to watch out for. All right, Pete, at Florida State, a school record 11 players were taken yep. from the Seminoles to the NFL draft and gone. Among those is EJ Manuel. So, how is Jameis Winston going to do in replacing him at Florida well, State? Well, he, he can't do a whole bunch worse because it's not like you know, Manuel lit it up. That was never his real thing as far as being a pro prospect. It was his upside. Now, Manuel was great. He progressed, but he was never a superstar like he was supposed to be. Winston, after his spring game, now the sky's the limit. Now everyone's expecting him to be the guy to carry things. Now, he's going to be rocky to start because he still needs that time logged in the system. But, boy, he showed a lot. He's got the tools. He's got the talent. He's got the upside. He's got the speed, the arm. It's all there. Winston's going to be the face of this program for the next few years. All right, let's go back to the Big 12 for a moment, guys. And West Virginia, where the spring media guide, Chris, describes 2013 as a rebuilding year on offense. Who can we expect to take the reins from, from Geno Smith, and what should those expectations be? Well, how about this for a cop-out answer? I have faith in Daniel Holgerson, whoever he decides to go with. He worked wonders at Tech at Houston, and then continue, you know, let's, let's face it, at Oklahoma State, he did a pretty nice job with Brandon Whedon in developing him into a big-time quarterback. Obviously, this derby becomes a little bit more interesting with the addition last month of Clint Trickett, who checks in from Florida State, and obviously, uh, whoever Dana Holgerson chooses is going to plug themselves into a high-powered offense, but that's one of those to where I'll say, guys, I have faith in whoever Dana Holgerson decides, just don't count out Clint Trickett in this battle. Big decisions to be had here over the offseason and into the fall. Chris, Pete, guys, thanks very much. Well, how are transfers impacting the game of college basketball and what, if anything, can be done about it? Find out only on CampusInsiders.com.